Hi, welcome everyone. So, a double lunar wave. How cool is that? Even cooler than just catching one lunar wave. And absolutely incredible. You could clearly see it. We're going to turn it all angles. This is with a simple negative filter, right? So, we're just this is a negative image of the lunar waves. So, what is this? Is this caused by the sun? We're going to look at it magnified too clear straight up without any filters so that we can see it really really close and again don't you know it's not that i like pissing off the trolls but you could clearly see that it's moving over top of the crater it's hugging the moon as it's moving across and you'll see what happens once it goes over the craters we're going to uh, zoom in really really close so this is how it arrived straight up yes from right to left over the moon not from top to bottom, from right to left, which is very interesting because Crow 777, someone mentioned, oh, uh, uh, Crow's was going the other way. Oh, I don't care which way it was going. It's still a lunar wave. It's even more scary, the fact that the wave's going um, in a different angle as to uh, what um, Crow 777 showed. And I have to be very careful because I haven't analyzed his video at all there. So, um, you know, before... Uh, talking for him all i know is that he got a lunar wave and um i have i've not gotten any like him uh, until now these two here so every time i've showed you all a lunar wave while we see the, the strong magnification coming up um i've always showed you a ripple a small ripple and we're going to go see it too but with a second ripple so there's a lunar wave that occurs and then a smaller ripple afterwards and i'm going to show you that so far this is by the way my fourth capture and in all with uh, the two waves each time that i was seeing is about 10 waves lunar waves i was able to document and that i have right here on the channel so let's see it here uh, um, close up one more time and we're just going to quite simply turn it around um, i believe is the next frame so look at it literally going over top of the surface interacting uh, with the surface meaning um, if it was my camera, you wouldn't see that change in the surface. Watch it there. Boom. Watch it go over the other crater. Wow. A very solid line. It's too bad it wasn't a full moon. I would have been able to see it, but still very, very cool. So here we just turned it around. It does look like a, a wave in an ocean, doesn't it? Honestly, that's pretty spectacular. And um, oh, by the way, we're going to see the daytime moon. A uh, UFO, anomaly, whatever, bird, Superman, I don't care. I'll show you what it was. It's just unknown flying objects. I'm always very careful um, to be sure they're not birds, to, and I can never confirm it, so it's still fun to share them. So check it out, y'all. This is um, a very um, exceptional capture of a lunar wave, but do you notice how it's not at all as thick as Crow 777's, nor the one that I just captured, the double one, which it is as strong as Crow 777s. I'm closer. I got the 14-inch scope. I'm on the moon really, really close. And you could even see some bloody color. It's a thick line. So it's um, the fabrics of time are being pushed aside. There's something with an invisible wavelength that uh, our eyes, human wavelengths of the eyes that we cannot see. With a filter, right? Maybe with an infrared camera or another special camera, we'd be able to see um, a pretty incredible surface. Um, of that wave going by and maybe we, we would be able to see something else so the wave here is not as pronounced but there's a ripple and um, you could see um, one and then two and at one point even a smaller third wave so is this coming from the sun and anyways if so we are going to go uh, to look at the CME, coronal mass ejection, that I actually captured with a filter and applied colors while the um, uh, the sun started breaking apart and you see all the uh, layers go up. When I film the sun, you see nothing. It's a ball, right? And then all of a sudden, I started seeing some uh, elevation of these lines coming off the top, like electricity. And uh, lo and behold, a CME came out of the sun, a massive piece of plasma. Check it out. Is there water between Earth and the moon? Quite possibly. So here again, a last shot. You can see here pretty well. And yes, Clavius Crater. That's where that um, those lunar waves, two of them, by the way, you can see them very clearly. One, 
and two as we go back and forth. So this is another capture. I have also two more captures. I just didn't find them, but they are here on the channel of Lunar Ways. But again, the one that you just saw yesterday and the one that we magnified um, today is the one that was the most, uh, the clearest that I've ever gotten. And yeah, a double one, which they both were uh, quite clear. Now, I don't know if Crow got that during the day or the evening, but uh, that's another thing there. Like me, I know. So what we're looking at here is a solar event. They call it coronal cloud. This is what a NASA declares being a coronal cloud. So let's take a look at that. And this is what's detaching from the sun. And you're going to see a bit down the road here. I'm going to get, going to get an arrow up on my cloud and ejecta. Because it's literally ejecta, right? When they talk about an asteroid strike pff, and they say ejecta, what flies up. This is basically plasma too. And it, it's what's dangerous to come towards Earth is that coronal cloud. Coronal cloud is basically hot plasma gas surrounding a coronal mass ejection. And this is what we're seeing right here uh, leaving the sun. It's usually made up of protons and electrons. When a coronal mass ejection occurs at the Earth's sun, um, it is the coronal cloud that usually reaches Earth and causes damage to electrical equipment and space satellites, not the ejection of flare itself. The damage is mostly the result of high amounts of electricity moving through the atmosphere. That's what's coming. A coronal cloud is released when a solar flare becomes a coronal mass ejection. So in this footage, we see everything. We see the coronal, uh, we see the solar flare beginning uh, at the beginning, and then we see it becomes a coronal mass ejection. And then uh, the coronal cloud uh, often contains more radioactive particles, and that's what we're seeing leaving to head towards Earth way back in 2017. And um, a coronal mass ejection occurs when a solar flare becomes so hot that it snaps and breaks in two, becoming a rope, they call it, of heat magnetism that stretches between two sunspots. So yes, 217. Um, you literally see something coming out of the sun and all the different colors is the different heat intensities uh, with the filter. And yeah, the SS... Um, Starship Enterprise comes out basically of the sun and all those layers will go back down and become just one. I've never seen the sun do this before, as you see on the bottom. And luckily with the filter, uh, with many different types of filters, you could see uh, the reaction. Look at it thrusting and pulsating the sun. This is absolutely incredible. And I remember it when it happened. So that was a corona mass ejection. And hey, the sun's supposed to be getting really, really strong, y'all very very strong from now to 2025 there should be more things coming into the solar system and what is this well that's structuring right on the moon large massive gray chalk like objects white reflective towering objects with lines and connections that are lifting up off of the surface that of course have the same reflectivity and are blending in with the surface very well now check it out we were zoomed out and we're going to go back to the exact same area. And yes, you see towering objects. You see 90 degree angles. You see bumps side by side, all objects. There's no reason for there to be bumps. Uh, the moon does not have chicken pox, right? The structures have the same reflectivity as the surface. Better seen from far away. So again, there's many ways, you know, you, you try to look at them as well as you can to be able to get your eye to pick up on things. So if this isn't a prison or um, holding something or a machine or something, imagine a water filtration system or some type of filtration system where you have pools, square pools holding liquids and all these pipes running to it. I come up with so many theories about this area, but it, it is very, very scary. It literally looks like a prison. We got an enormous amount of rain um, here, uh, violent storms, I'd say a min miniature tornado for sure, not, maybe not that miniature, and uh, it went from beautiful clouds to uh, this. And here's some of the daytime moon, we're going to do a few tests, and at the same time, I want to show you all how to get um, space images even during the day. It's nice to see the moon with a blue sky behind it, but I, let me show you what we can do in the middle of the afternoon, and I'll show you some comparisons side by side of both viewing the moon like this and like this.
So both these images are being filmed at the same time in the middle of the afternoon. So it's noontime, 12 o'clock, lunchtime. On the right, all I did is I descended the exposure and uh, notice how there's a lot of blue around the moon um, for whatever the reason. It's oxygen, it's gotta be something, right? And look at the beautiful colors. You can see the surface um, at least four or five times better. And yet it's the same moon. So with a little manipulation, um, you can uh, get the most out of your camera. Check out this anomaly. Bird, plane, Superman, UFO, nothing, dust, debris, my mind, doesn't matter, check it out. It disappears at one point. This moon was filmed on June 20th. The time was 12 o'clock noon time, with the exposure taken down completely. Filming the moon during the day this way will help you even see explosions during the day and you will even be able to film them. Filming the moon with the exposure taken down like this during the day will get rid of that sun problem and you will be able to see objects passing over the surface of the moon and be able to film them in the middle of the afternoon without having any problems from the sun. When you're filming the moon during the day and your exposure completely down, just bring your exposure all the way down until your first crater starts to disappear and stop there. Your sky will disappear, become black, but the light of the moon will keep it lit for you and you'll have a beautiful space daytime image. Aliens on the moon, they must mud in They are best in the gallery. Cause the slow just coming soon. Cause the slow just coming soon. 